Hey everyone, welcome to the next video for section 9.4. So in this video what we're going to do is do an example of the competing species model and see what we get out of that. So we're going to use both the null clients method and the um, general Jac Jacobian analysis method to see what we get for our critical points and that's what's going on here. So let's go ahead and jump right into the example. So the example we want to do is this one. dx dt equals x 2 minus 0.5x minus 0.25y and dy dt equals y 5 minus y minus x. So let's start with the null client analysis and do that part first, and then we'll go on to the Jacobian normal stuff afterwards. So for the x null clients, I get x equals 0, and I get 2 minus 0.5x minus 0.25y equals 0, 2 minus 0.5x equals 0.25y, or y equals 8 minus 2x, which I can just graph. And for the y null clines, I get y equals 0, or I get 5 minus y minus x equals 0, or y equals 5 minus x. So let's go ahead and graph these and see what we get from there. So here's y, here's x. If I do y equals 8 minus 2x, that means I start at 8 and end up down at 4 over here. And if I do 5 minus x, that means I start at 5 and I land at 5 over here. So our critical points are going to be the intersections, which are going to be here, 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 and here. And then our null client analysis tells us what? It tells us that up here we should be coming down and left, because always if we're on the competing species thing and we're really far away, we're always coming back in towards these lines. If I cross a red line, my x derivative changes. So instead of going down and left, I should be going down and right. Here I'm going up and right, up and left. And here I'm going up and right. So we're going to hope this tells us this is astronomically stable because that's what this analysis tells us. So what are our critical points? Because we need to know that before we start doing the Jacobian analysis type stuff. So our critical points are the origin, 4, 0 at the bottom here, 0, 5, and then the intersection point of the two lines. Well, so if I find the intersection, 8 minus 2x equals 5 minus x, negative x equals negative 3, so x is 3 and then y is 2. So the point here is 3, 2. So now let's check all of those points using our Jacobian process that we discussed in the last section and see what we get out of that. So our functions that we had, we had dx dt equals, I'll just write them up here and then we'll come back to them. And so what I did here is I distributed out all the terms, so I had them all written out in a row. So now we're going to find the Jacobian matrix for this system. So our Jacobian matrix is going to be what? It's going to be the x derivative of the x function. So 2 minus x minus 0.25y. The y derivative of the same function, 2, 5x. The x derivative of the y function, and the y derivative of the y function. So now let's check our various critical points. So at 0, 0, j of 0, 0 is what? It's just 2, 0, 0, 5. This is an unstable node, which is good. That's what we wanted to see out of that. Let's check the other points. So, so if I plug in 0, 5, that's the point that was on the axis, I get this matrix, 0 0.75, 0, negative 5, negative 5. And this is a saddle point because the eigenvalues are the numbers on the diagonal. And that, in this case, because there's a 0 here. So our numbers are going to be negative 5 and 0.75, which are going to be opposite sign, so we're going to get a saddle point there, which is good. We didn't want this to be stable. If I plug in 4, 0, I get something that looks similar. I get minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, which again is a saddle. We want it to be unstable. We're getting a saddle point. That's good. Now I just want to check the intersection. So if I plug in 3 and 2, what I get for my matrix is 2 minus 3 minus 0.5 minus 0.75 minus 2, 5 minus 4 minus 3. So I get minus 1.5, minus 0.75, minus 2, minus 2. And now let's figure out the characteristic polynomial here to figure out what we're going to get. So let's just use the trace determinant form because that's easier to sort of handle. So we know we're getting r squared minus the trace times r plus the determinant. which is going to be r squared minus minus 1.5 minus 2 r plus minus 1.5 times minus 2 minus minus 2 minus 0.75 so i get r squared plus 3.5 r 
plus 3 minus 1.5. So I get r squared plus 3.5 r plus 1.5. And now if I put this in the quadratic formula, what am I going to see? I'm going to see that r equals negative 3.5 plus or minus the square root of 3.5 squared minus 6 over 2. And now what I'm going to notice is that this part of the square root is going to be strictly less than 3.5 squared because it's 3.5 squared minus 6. So that means these are going to be both real and negative. So this is a asymptotically stable node. So we got what we wanted. We got that all the other critical points were unstable. They were either nodes or saddle points that were unstable. And this guy came out to be a stable node, which we thought we were going to get from our null client analysis, and we got that here as well. So let's jump to Maple real quick and see what Maple says for this problem, because hopefully it says the same thing we did. And Maple agrees. So Maple agrees that we have um, a unstable node at 0, we have a saddle point at 5, a saddle point at 4, and then in here we have some sort of asymptotically stable node because all the curves are flowing in to our point at 3 and 2 right about here. All right, so the two, video, the two methods came out to give us the same thing, which is kind of what they should do because we're trying to solve the same problem both ways. So they better come out to the same thing. And Maple agrees with both of our calculations. All right, so that's it for this video, and that's it for the section on competing species. In the next section, we'll talk about predator-prey models and how we can do the same sort of thing with them to do analysis on that and see what we get out of those models as well. So thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.